also launched the entire range of restorative products. Uh, these products are man manufactured from, uh, by German, uh, by, uh, from a factory in Germany, and they are the best quality products that we have brought in the market. And if we have an entire range or starting from the uh, latest generation bond to uh, bulk fill composite, to my, uh, micro hybrid composite, to nano composite. So uh, we would request you to have a try on these products also. This is the list of our uh, sales team members, those who are there uh, across India to help you with the, in getting the original products. So you can keep a note of these numbers and you can contact them for post the course and you can place your orders or if you have any further inquiries about our products, you can get in touch with them and they will definitely help you out. Uh, and before the start of the conference, just one more request uh, for to everyone. Uh, post the end of this uh, session, uh, we would request you to please put in your questions. Uh, our uh, speaker will be more than happy to answer them. And uh, after the session, we will be sharing a feedback link with everyone. We would request you to please fill in your feedbacks into those uh, into that link. So with that, I end my presentation. Thank you everyone for your time. Good morning once again. Today's speaker is Dr. Vinod R. from Bangalore, post graduated from GDC Bangalore. He is the founder and director at Roots. He is a former professor and head at uh, Sharavati Dental College, Shimoka. He frequently lectured and conducted hands-on courses in microdentistry, advanced endodontics, and restorative dentistry. He is one among the pioneers to introduce nitai rotary instrumentation, thermoplastic gutta percha techniques, and microdentistry in India. He introduced a novel concept in cleaning of smear layer from root canal called whirlpool effect. He is the founder and CEO of Dental Health Organization, India's first digital platform to organize dentistry. Welcome, Dr. Vinod, sir. Now the platform is uh, yours for the lecture and demo. Thank you, Dr. Vinod, sir. Hello, doctor. Uh, Vinod, sir, you are on mute. Yeah, can you all hear me? Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mosmi, for that kind words. And uh, I uh, thank uh, the IDA Malnad branch, the president, Dr. Deepak, and the secretary, and the whole uh, members for giving us this opportunity to share my views about uh, endodontics. And I thank Mani for uh, you know creating this platform for all of us to really know uh, how the uh, latest products are introduced and how we can make a full use of them. So uh, uh, Dr. Mosumi, I want you to uh, coordinate if there are any questions in between or if there are any doubts, because I want it to be a two-way kind of an interaction. Uh, at most of the times, sure, I'll sir. be actually sure, asking, sir. I'll be picking up questions myself rather than uh, looking at the audience. And we have a final session where we have the uh, question and answers which we can have. So first of all, uh, okay, when the, the this, end. yeah, at the end we can pick up the topics, but I'll be asking some of the general questions, which you know, which will help me to you know articulate the presentation well because I need to understand what are the kind of practices we are all uh, been doing all these days, whether it is relevant, whether it is right, what is the right technique to oh, adapt, and other things. Yeah. So with that, uh, I like to uh, you know introduce endodontics. And called it simplified because the uh, the complexity of endodontics is huge and uh, there is no scientific approach to it. Uh, though it is simplified, I wanted to add on something uh, with a scientific approach. Let's not just think that we are technicians, we are doctors, clinicians with like, so many years of uh, experience. But when the new technology arrives, are we ready for it is what the whole presentation is going to be about. So greetings from Bangalore. I hail from Bangalore and um, all of us are in a lockdown and please stay safe. There's nothing which I can tell about this. We have a lot of information about the uh, pandemic. So only thing which we can say is I hope all of you are vaccinated and uh, stay safe. So as uh, apart from my uh, you know, uh, clinical work. I am also involved in uh, doing something to dentistry. Uh, this is a startup where we are working on launching the dental insurance and we will be in shortly in, uh, you know, introduction of that in our country. 
So I appreciate money all the time for supporting the education apart from only selling because there are very few companies which focus on education and give the liberty to the clinicians to express their views rather than the products. And I thank money and team, Manoj, Shivam and all the others who have joined us today. So this is where I practice. I have an exclusive anodontic practice it's called as Roots Dental. And this is my setup. So I have been one of the first to use microscopes in the country way back since 2004, five itself. And I have a dedicated training center. You can see two microscopes and you can see all that, uh, what I uh, treat can be visualized here as well. So this is how uh, my 3D uh, view of the clinic, which uh, is a microscope center practice, which allows you to move around 360 degree around the chair. So please do not squeeze a space at the back. Back about three feet is very essential for a good endodontic practice where your assistant moves out and moves in. This is my endo cart where I keep all my stuff which can be moved to either of the chairs depending on the case which where I'm treating. So that's uh, a little bit about to market what we do to the patients, very essential. So you can just put up a neat uh, saying that why you need to get root canal at um, your clinic and uh, we concentrate on People don't understand what is called as microscope. So we call it as minimally invasive root canal treatment and specialist in saving the tooth. And we give all the description about it. This is something which is very essential. See, when we get into education, we, we come to know that we are learning, we are investing our time, uh, but the patients don't really appreciate what we do. And it is our responsibility to inform them in small way or the other that what, uh, you know, what are the kind of quality of care you deliver and what is root canal. So with this introduction, Dr. Mosmi, I just want to understand uh, in your idea branch, um, what is the kind of problems you uh, face as endodontist or the general dentist where you're looking at, uh, you know, this root canal, whether on marketing or on um, the cost or uh, whatever, you have any difficulties in your region uh, regarding the root canal treatment is the lack of awareness or uh, the cost is the only question. Dr. Mausmi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I asked you uh, that what is the current situation in your uh, region that uh, the awareness is good enough among the patients for the root canal or uh, the patients are not willing to get the root canal done because of the cost uh, per se? Actually, they are, nowadays they are uh, aware and uh, they want to save the tooth. So, uh, uh, they are... Uh, more than extraction, they prefer a root canal only. Most of the patients, but there are cases where uh, they prefer extraction due to some financial problems. Does is the COVID uh, brought in some changes where people prefer for an extraction? Yes, uh, the, yes uh, they came only for uh, pain relief. They That's don't want it. any treatment. Just yeah. pain relief. Uh, just that was enough for them. As uh, it, this is the situation. Yeah, I completely agree with that because patients are only finding relief and they are scared about their going to a dentist. This is one of the challenges all of us are facing. So I don't know how we'll come out of this. Uh, we'll have to keep reassuring them that we are very safe and we follow all the protocols. But when it comes to endodontics, I think uh, you, your branch must have organized a couple of courses on endodontics. So what are the challenges among your members about endodontics? Is that that they want to learn the rotary or they want to learn endodontics per se? Because everybody thinks that rotary is endodontics and they forget about all the other things which has to be focused. Yes, sir. I just want to, you to clear the myths and uh, the general practitioners and uh, what can be done and what not to be done uh, with the rotary. Okay. So basically, thank you there for that, doctor. So patients come to us for pain. So it is very unpleasant and they want some kind of an immediate relief. The immediate relief can either be that uh, it has to be extracted and uh, the other one is that you'll have to immediately do something to relieve the problem by uh, doing a simple access cavity and they're on plan and then convince the patient based on that. Uh, we always should understand and educate the patient that you're saving a natural tooth over an artificial tooth. Most of the patients are in the impression that I will remove this tooth and fix it with something else a later point of time. But you'll also have to explain them the, uh, the challenges in fixing an artificial tooth over and, uh, you know, rehabilitating the tooth, which is natural. So the problem for us always has been that the patient has a physical pain, which is handled. 
but the psychological pain cannot be handled. So it is more of the way you present your patient about your skills and the confidence what you show to your patient makes the patient understand that uh, they can go ahead with this treatment. Yeah. So first of all, you should understand uh, what exactly is root canal. So Excuse the root me, canal Dino, is... Sir? Yeah. On your slide, there is one box. Uh, can you delete and it removed? I'm not able to do, remove that. I'm trying to do that. Is it gone? No, it is safe. It's disturbing, right? I'm not able to move that window. Exit slide uh, uh, share, then try uh, doing it or uh, exit from the slide uh, share. Yeah, now I think we can do it. We can close it. One sec. I'll just stop the share. It's not there when I am actually presenting, so I don't know what's happening. Now it's not there. Now it's here. Okay. Yes, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So basically, what I wanted to tell you is that uh, uh, what is root canal? So the root canal is nothing but uh, it's a very simple understanding that we uh, we need to understand is that is to provide a biological environment that is conducive for healing. What we are trying to do is that we are cleaning up the wound there. That's more on the biological approach. But what we are focusing today is on shaping the root canal. We think that we fill and shape the root canal and the root canal will be fine and successful. So I would like to emphasize here that the biological principles, what is applied is more important than just shaping the root canal. So there are always one question asked by everybody that, uh, yes, I can today sit in this presentation and acquire the skill and uh, means I acquire the knowledge. But what happens to my skill? Skill has to be acquired on a day-to-day -day process that you go ahead and then you go and practice what is you've learned until and unless you do this on a day-to-day -day -day basis, you cannot achieve success. So my humble request to all of you is that by just listening to my presentation and just going and trying over the patient directly is not advisable. Mind caution that you work on some couple of extracted teeth and then move ahead with your uh, working on your live patients. So very important is that we don't make mistakes and we don't want to learn after making a mistake. Yeah. So what are the operator's uh, knowledge and what are the skill sets what you need to have is that you need to uh, have the skills to diagnose. The next common problem So you gone on mute. So the greatest challenge is that uh, we fail to achieve anesthesia and I will share something. And the, all the other things is that which is uh, very important is to identify uh, or understand the root canal orifice, where exactly they are and achieving patency. My focus of presentation today will be on achieving patency and shaping of uh, root canals and cleaning of root canals. So the focus of the presentation is to, with the current instrumentation, now we can move forward. So one of the major problem all of us face today is that to diagnose the uh, you know, uh, root canal itself, whether the patient needs it or uh, is there something else or there is an alternative. When a pain, patient presents to you with a pain, you'll have to take a good history of pain. A clinical evaluation, even though patient wants to get a root canal treatment done, you should evaluate whether this particular patient, I can do it. That's a clinical assessment, which I'll be sharing later. And the radiographic assessment is that whether this tooth can be treated, whether the canals are patent, 
before even you're doing your ortho treatment, you do a cephalometric analysis to understand what is the patient having and then how we proceed. Similarly, a radiographic assessment, a preoperative radiographic assessment is very, very crucial. And finally, the operator's ability. You need to check whether you have the tools for that particular treatment today with you. Please do not attempt something when you don't have all the tools in place and then land up in a problem and then learning how to treat a problem. Yeah, very crucial is that these five, four factors has to be emphasized. So coming to anesthesia, doctors, uh, Dr. Mosmi, you can share uh, whether you have this challenge that you're, you're able to treat, and uh, but you're not able to anesthetize the tooth. And you're just because you're not able to anesthetize the tooth, you're calling the patients more number of times. Does such challenges happen uh, at your practice as well as uh, you have uh, heard about your colleagues talking about it, how to manage this? Do you have any uh, challenges there? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, that happens at times. So, but what you guys uh, uh, try to do for that? Is there a challenge that you have uh, overcome by discussing and then, or you're just uh, going to torture the patient by saying, okay, don't just wait, you can come again, again and this is normal. This is a, a usual kind of, you know, explanation what all of us uh, give to our patients. So when you do your endodontics, the one of the major challenge for us is that to anesthetize the tooth before even doing. So first and foremost, you should understand if there is a tooth is vital or non-vital. If there is non-vital tooth, please do not give anesthesia and unwantedly torture the patient by uh, making that area numb. If you feel that the tooth is non-vital, you can go ahead and directly work. But if there is a tooth which is quite a hot tooth, what you need to do is that you need to give injections in a slower formation. That means to say the first injection should be superficial, make that superficial area numb so that patient feels that the deeper penetration is not painful. Once the initial superficial penetration, for example, for a mandibular uh, inferior alveolar nerve, on the first phase, if you go take it directly deep, the patient will be annoyed and it's quite painful to insert the needle that deep. So what I suggest is that, that you superficially block that area, leave it for some time, and then take your injection needles deeper down. The other thing what you need to do is that uh, there is, uh, when you have an odd tooth situation, you have a bupiocaine which you can administer the patient rather than your regular, uh, you know, xylocaine. So this is something which is a long-acting anesthesia. You need to pick up. Nowadays, it doesn't come in bottle. It comes in a vial. So you can have these vials and use them and inform the patient that the anesthesia achieved by this lasts quite longer than your regular anesthesias. During this situation, you'll find that the tooth becomes quite numb and uh, you're able to treat the patient rather than giving an intrapulpal or making the patient jump. Though you give all the, uh, if you have all the subjective symptoms, you still feel that the patient has a problem of uh, when you go deeper and when you're hitting the roof of the pulp chamber, you still patient feel jumping. But when you try with bupiocaine, you will not find that uh, you know, challenge and patient will be completely comfortable and allow you to do the procedure thoroughly. Okay. The other common techniques and the latest techniques are single tooth anesthesia which are available, but they are quite expensive and uh, we don't recommend at this point of time. But those who are interested are always willing to invest on this technology where you need to charge separately for your anesthesia, unlike your general uh, surgeons or uh, your um, you know uh, physicians and i mean to say uh, medical doctors who use a separate fee for anesthesia so with this amount of introduction what i would like to take you through a roller coaster ride of endodontic solutions which money provides and the uh, list of armamentarium they have for us uh, do, uh, for our regular endodontic work starting from a uh, burr called as ex24 which is the first to which will help us to do a good access cavity without having any kind of uh, you know, perforations or anything. They're safe and tip. And then you have regular AND files. You have D finders and newly introduced glide, uh, glide finders I will be talking about. You have the new rotary system from Money, which will be uh, uh, the main focus of discussion today because with the new technology and new uh, uh, you know, design features, we have the retreatment files and we have the micro files as well. And these are some of the ultrasonic tips used for your retreatment work. So for me, I don't have to jump between the products for a simple endodontic solution to the complex endodontic solution. I have the products from money, which gives me a complete uh, confidence in handling the cases. So magnification is one of the key factors. And I would request that if you're doing 
if you are if you are investing your time on a good endodontic procedure magnification of some form is really necessary be it a microscope or a simple 2.5x loop is very essential which will help you to do a job thoroughly now the most difficult challenge what all of us have is to achieve patency what is this patency or what is this glide path if you look at this uh, radiograph on this side this is the actual configuration of most of our roots that means to say they are very tortuous they are very curvaceous but is it possible for us to maintain this anatomy throughout our endodontic uh, procedure that means starting from axis cavity till the end of the preparation so don't you don't perforate if you use larger size files you can perforate that is why rotary nickel titanium files were introduced to us to able to manage these kind of curves straight canals can be prepared with your hand files but when it starts to uh, curve we do not know whether the uh, the curvature exists or not until and unless you insert a file and you remove out of the canal and it comes out in a curved manner so these challenges are uh, something which you need to master with so you have uh, different files and uh, everybody says that okay i have smaller size k files can i do with this yes you can do with that but the problem is the smallest size k files are quite uh, you know uh, they can they are so sensitive that they just can bend and you cannot reuse them again so i am going to introduce uh, my technique where i use these um, glide path files or glide finders and the definders and one of the essential feature of while doing a glide path is the lubrication if you do not have lubrication there ends there begins the problem wherein the files can actually create ledge ledge is nothing but a step kind of a thing where it will not allow the file to further get inside the canal where it is to previously go so please ensure that you always carry any hand files with lubrication and the technique is important and finally being patient don't be in a hurry uh, to actually reach the apex because it is not easy and don't push and don't use force patience is the key factor for the success of endodontic treatment so the initial canal exploration is crucial if you look at this slide where it says that there could be you know it could go here and stop and it requires a gentle uh, twisting or rotation motion to further take it so this tells us that our regular k files cannot handle these kind of you know crossroads for example if you're driving your car and then you suddenly get an ear pin bend you have to slow down apply the brakes look from the other side if anybody is coming and then take your car right so you'll have to be very careful and we cannot experience we do not get to see the similar situ situation like how we drive our car inside the canals so the only thing what you need to do is listen to what your files tell you when the file tells you it's not going please stop please do something else so what does the file tell you when it stops when you are actually penetrating into the canal is that it tells you it starts to curve there and it requires some amount of help to maneuver that curve so your regular k files if you use them in such curves it will unwind and come and there's a risk of fracture so the uh, definders are being a fracture toughness one time 1.5 times greater than that of your k files and the flute cross section is d shape which actually reduces any screwing in effect or any mishaps which can happen so one of the greatest advantage uh, for us today is to initially explore these canals and completely replace i request you to replace them with your definders they are quite efficient and quite uh, amazing to use you will find that how they glide through in these curvatures as compared to your k files the other advantage is that they are available in sizes which is 8 10 12 and 15 when you are exploring the canals you will find that an 8 and 10 size goes easy but when you immediately try to push your 15 15 struggles to go there so why the 15 struggles to go there is the jump from 8 to 15 is massive unlike when it is 8 to 10 which is only about 2 degrees here it's a jump of 5 degrees inside the canal in, if you use a 15 when the 15 file is not going where the 10 went for example 21 mm the 10 size file is gone and 15 doesn't go don't force it you will create a ledge with the definders you get the size 12 which actually does the job much easier so then you can create a, an excellent glide part into the canal so this is a new money glide uh, finder files which is introduced uh, very nice again 
and the cost effective, unlike uh, most of the other files where they recommend a rotary file to be used. The unique cross section of this is it's a square cross section. As it moves on from the bottom, from this region to this, it starts increasing in the diameter where it becomes rectangular. The same square cross section of a K file is here where it needs to be strong. And as it goes on from D0 to D16, the cross section changes and makes the file stronger at the, at, at the shank and makes it quite uh, you know, efficient and also enable it to penetrate better than your K files. This is something, again, they are also available in size 12, which is a boon to us as a dentist to create a glide path in a more cost-effective manner and also staying safe. So if you look at the flutes, uh, they, can, they can channelize the debris well, unlike your other uh, uh, files where your uh, K files, which is square, blocks all the debris coming out. And uh, this is something which all of us uh, should try and uh, experience. Once you do these steps, it becomes easier for your rotary files to glide through and prepare the canal the way, same way how the canals were previously existed rather than creating any canal uh, transportation or canal damages. So if you look at this particular video, I, you can show that, uh, I can show you that how this, this is a D finder which we are trying to use. You can see that the canal is, uh, narrower, you're taking a lubricant and you're slightly going, nibbling the file gently into the canal and taking it. You're not forcing them. You can see another uh, canal, which is your uh, mesiobuccal or mesiodistobuccal, which is blocked. You're slightly maneuvering it. So this is the force what you need to use while you are doing your glide path. Do not force your files into the canal and keep rotating them in clockwise and anti-clockwise. First, passively penetrate them into the canal and gently take the lubricant and see whether the file is going without any effort. If it if requires any effort, change to the next size. That means to say, first try, try with a 15 size. If 15 size goes easily into all these canals, I'm quite comfortable. But if the 15 doesn't go, then I shift to 10. And if the 10 doesn't go to the estimated working length, then I shift to eight. That's how I start. But then once it goes to eight, you'll have to bring back the canal to the size 15 before you introduce rotary files. You can see the uh, dimensions of these flutes here. They are very different. These are D finders and they're very comfortable to use and they do not fracture unlike your K files. So that's on your uh, how to use the technique. Very important aspect of a uh, root canal treatment is to understand which particular canal you're treating. For example, uh, if I classify the canal systems into small, medium, and large, this is how the canals will appear. And you can see the anatomy here, the large canals, the medium canals, and small canals. You can see all these teeth, which are large canals, are quite comfortable to treat. The blue ones are quite difficult to handle. And the uh, yellow ones are okay to treat. And we will I will share all the um, you know uh, further slides to say that how do you manage these canals? Basing this is how you try to do your preparation. You do not try to uh, just follow a simple three file technique or a two file technique. You will have to prepare the canals according to the diameters and the complexity of the root canal anatomy and not the box which is provided to you. Yeah. So how do you assess which is a difficult case and which is an easy case for us is that first and foremost, as I mentioned to you, if an eight size file goes into the canal, means that means that once you open up your root canal, use your 15 size. If the 15 is getting blocked here, use 10. And if the 15, 10 is getting blocked, use an eight. If eight is going to the estimated working length, it's one of the difficult cases for you to handle for your rotary files. So you'll have to bring this canal to the size 15 before you introduce a rotary file. Then if a 15 is not going, then put a 10, 10 goes. It's a moderately uh, kind of severity while preparing. The next one is your uh, easy case, which requires lesser effort for your rotary files when they are uh, you know, preparing the root canal. I don't know how to explain this to you. The very simpler form is that there are two things which you'll have to understand. The canal curvature is different, which is seen in the radiograph. The radius of curvature is not seen in the radiograph. That means to say, 
how severe is your curve if you look at your radiograph the curve will just look like this but to understand how severe is the curve because your radiographs cannot show you a third dimension unlike your cbcts so you don't know where the curve is bending and how the root is taking that curvature this that tells you how sharp or how complex that bend is for you to prepare so for this only choice is to understand is by a simpler technique first you introduce a simple case a k, a k file or your d finders of a smaller size it goes and stops here once it stops here you take adjust the rubber stopper and then now you introduce the file slowly with minor rotations into the canal the amount of resistance it offers to go through this curvature tells you that how bad is that curvature for you if the curvature is very bad please be very careful in first doing a good amount of glide path to make this curve better before introducing a rotary files these are very key crucial points uh, in our endodontic procedures and this requires a clinical acumen and judgment rather than expecting a rotary file to take this road and go and finish this and please do not unnecessarily blame any rotary file it is the clinical diagnosis when you are treating your patient for that the other challenge is to also remove the coronal interferences if the coronal interferences is, is also complex the curvature also becomes complex so i will teach you a technique how to remove the coronal interference at the root canal orifice before you further do all these techniques so you should understand one thing that your rotary files or your and files cannot treat all the complexity and the root canal anatomy the root canal anatomy has lot of variations unlike you look at this particular root canal picture here which has got such a complex anatomy this is a c shape mandibular 7 uh, you 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 cannot use any particular rotary to treat this you can just use them in the coronal portion to remove all the debris but the whole length of the canal has to be handled with hand instruments and other things so what i'm trying to impress upon particular this slide is that don't get exaggerated thinking that oh i have learned and don't i'm going to push my file whatever i've got a pack of files into any canal possible and that needs to do the job it is not a robotic file or it cannot assess the anatomy and then further do anything by itself so you will also have to understand even if you have all the tools with you you still cannot you are treat those cases and every case is challenging so finally i think uh, dr mosami you should help me here that all of us uh, would have got introduced to rotary files much before in our uh, practices right so you must all be using some form of the file am i right dr mosami are yes, you sir. there yes yes sir yes sir i am here i just unmute so uh, can you just take up uh, some questions at this point understanding uh the the participants or i can i request all the participants to tell us what challenges you have with the current rotary file what is the uh, one great problem though you might be having a rotary file must have bought it thinking that it will do everything but is there a challenge that uh, there is some problem and you are not able to overcome that participant please uh, write in the chat box I think there are some questions in the chat box. I'll read it out, sir. Yeah, please read it out. Yeah. Will intra-lateral anesthesia work on a hot tooth? The intra-palpal anesthesia is extremely painful for the patient. Yeah, as I mentioned to you, this intra-lateral and all is very good for all your periodontal work and not for your endodontic work. Please don't try all these things. the intra pulpal of course as you mentioned is very very difficult so for the patient it is very painful and very easy as a dentist okay you immediately put something it's not the anesthesia it's because of the pressure what you create intra pulpally works you just take a normal saline and put it into a small hole into the pulp chamber and give it still it will work it's not the anesthesia which is working so it's because of the pressure and it's extremely painful so please try to use the technique which i mentioned try to buy this uh, long acting anesthesia and preferably tries to reduce the inflammatory mediators by giving them uh, painkillers that previous morning before they ate your dental chair these are some of the better ways of handling it rather than 
trying to uh, ex uh, expect supplementary injections to an extent to anesthetize a uh, endodontic tooth. Then uh, next question or inquiry is about the file breakage or instrument preparation. That's what I wanted. So, you know, basically, today we are here. I wanted to ask you that question that you are all having that fear that this file is going to break. Am I right or wrong? So all of us do not use rotary files to some extent thinking that this file is going to break. All files are made to break. Let me tell you this. Forget about thinking that there is a file which will not break. Till now, there is nothing like that. And in the hands of an experienced person, also a file can break in a new pack provided you don't follow a simple basic uh, you know principles of endodontic um, you know the glide path and the other coronal interferences and expect a nickel titanium rotary file to take all the bashing which it can get into the canal okay so today i am going to present to you the jizai which is which is something which will answer all your questions about how not to break the file and how safe is this file for um, you know usage? So let me. Uh, Sir, uh, there are two something. more questions online. One is about the ideal lubricant in RCT, and the other one is dental endoscopy, apex and kit, and robotic uh, root canal treatment. Two questions. Sorry, sorry come again. The one first one question, question is your uh, your opinion on dental endoscopy. Apexin kit and the robotic root canal treatment. That is one question. Second one is ideal lubricant in root canal treatment. I will take that robotic thing at the later point of time, but let me um, uh, show you something about uh, the ideal uh, lubricant. Ideal lubricant would be anything which is possible, which is your RCL, which is EDTA with carbamyl peroxide. So you just get it in any uh, uh, any form. The economy matters again. When it comes to economy, you're using something which is available to you for 150 rupees. But there are expensive ones like Glide and other things which will cost you close to about 1,000 to 1,200 rupees. See, what, what is important in here is that, that how well the lubricant is, is working. So when something is expensive, definitely it requires lesser amount. You don't have to flood the canal. You just need drops of them. So it is until and unless you are a better judge to see which, uh, which particular lubricant which is available in the market is good enough. It's not only the lubricant, you'll have to keep the canals wet, which is sodium hypochlorite again. So once you actually use a lubricant, you flush it with sodium hypochlorite. So I'm just going to play you a video now about uh, Jizai's... Uh, Is it paused? Uh, can you see my screen or no? So we can see the screen, but I don't think it's moving. Is the video playing? No, sir. We are seeing the PPT. Okay. I'll come back again. Your screen is seen again. Is it screen now? No, it's coming up, sir. No? Oh, yes. yes, we can see it, sir. So this is a small video presentation from Mani, which... This tells you about the skill sets, what the Japanese people have in designing something.
So that was a small presentation from um, the money. Um, basically, uh, I had an opportunity to So just give me a sec. So I had an opportunity to visit uh, Japan and uh, thanks for money for taking us and showing us around the facility, which they, you know, kind of uh, run uh, is amazing there. Uh, the kind of quality they use in manufacturing the dental instruments is one of the world's best, I could say. And we witnessed everything. Uh, from um, from the manufacturing capability to the uh, you know the sub one sec any questions again before I have some hiccup here to share the screen I don't know there are some sir uh, I'll read it out. Uh, first one is that can we leave the canal if the canal is highly calcified, which is not able to instrument? Yeah, you can always leave the canal. There is no harm in uh, leaving the canal. Uh, the reason is uh, God is uh, God uh, is found its own way. Or I mean to say, there is when there is an abuse, when there is an abuse, uh, the body finds its own way to kind of. Uh, uh, clear up the whole canal by closing it. Like similar, you have a stone formation or anything. So there's no point in provided you see beyond the canal, if there is a periapical lesion, then comes the challenge. If that periapical lesion is related to, let's say that a mesiobuccal root is calcified and you have a periapical lesion below the mesiobuccal root, then you are in problem. So you'll have to uh, find ways to manage it at the retro retrograde that means say, you do a small surgery or do it another way of doing it but don't expect it to go through the canal and then try to do any damages yeah okay sir any other next questions is next is about the sodium hypotoxicity sodium hypochlorite toxicity i'll talk at the later point of time i've kept uh, that uh, but you, it is very important to use sodium hypochlorite throughout the procedure just because sodium hypochloride is toxic or sodium hypochloride is dangerous, the way you use it matters. So we will discuss in length about it. As I mentioned to you, when you're lubricating your instruments, doing a glide path, then finally clearing the canals, you'll have to use sodium hypochloride. Very, very efficient. As I told you, the biological principle, you cannot shape all the canals, but your sodium hypochloride can penetrate into these deeper canals and facilitate good amount of cleaning and the debris what you have generated requires cleansing and that sodium hypochlorite does. So I will talk about that uh, sodium hypochlorite. I don't call it toxicity. I would call it as, as a sodium hypochlorite accident that uh, you encounter because of your improper use. So if you ask me, what is this file for me? The first and foremost thing about this new file is that it is safe. The question asked by me when, uh, why, did, why do you uh, are looking for a newer file is that you're looking for a safe file. I could say something about this file. It is the safest file available in this market today where you will encounter the breakages as impossible. That doesn't tell you that you keep using this file till it breaks. I'm only telling you when you're doing your regular procedures, when you're starting to do a new case, unlike the other files tend to fracture, this has an inherent capability of being safe. At the same time, efficient. What I do mean efficient is that most of the files, they might uh, say that they are efficient in cutting. Efficient in cutting is not alone important. Efficiency in maintaining the canal anatomy, the way how it was is very important. So by this, if you want to, if, if somebody has to ask me two words about the Jizai, I would say it's safe and efficient. This is the classical feature of this file, which will help us do our endodontic procedures uh, in more um, successful way, having lesser amount of complications. Yeah. So the next few slides will tell you about a little bit about the metallurgy and how this file is designed and what design is incorporated, which will be very helpful for you to use them and also understand from your current files how they are better. So coming to the metallurgy, all of us know nickel terrarium is a it, it's it's like your rubber band, right? 
it has got one phase where it is a daughter sphere or a martensite phase or an austin type uh, phase so all the files before uh, let's say the first generation files your uh, protape or your k3 files were all manufactured at this phase that means to say it was in a stiffer phase then came some phases then they said let's manufacture the file in a elastic form but when these are all the files which are already there but there is a new phase called as the r phase or the control memory phase that means to say you bend a file it will stay in its own position it will not revert back unwantedly or unnecessarily like your regular nickel terrarium files which just bounces back this bouncing back can cause some amount of damage in the canal so this r phase is amazing and the control memory feature is what is used in this jizai files to manufacture them and uh, if you look at the design the design of the file is an off centered process what do i mean by this the blue lines which are here is a very unique feature to this file unlike uh, any of the files of these recent generation do not have this uh, blue color thing which is called as the radial land this radial land was a feature of the first generation of files this is not seen in the next generations because everybody thought that using a radial land the file becomes more stiff but when the technology changed yes it was stiff if it was manufactured in an austenite form but in an r phase form till today nobody is used a design feature which is incorporated into this is the radial land this radial land is what makes the file the most safest file and yet being flexible so please understand the radial land is the key feature in this r phase controlled memory file which makes this file the most safest file and i will share you some studies that even after so many rotations the files don't they do fracture but it is double to triple compared to the existing uh, rotary files which are there in the market so this it is also got an off centered design and it has got only one cutting edge so if you can see this this is the cutting edge which cuts and throws the debris away and i can show you uh, some of the cutting efficiency of these files uh, under my microscope itself so this is something which makes this file fracture resistant that is the radial land in a file with an r phase technology making the file flexible at the same time uh, safe so if you look at these scm uh, uh, you know pictures of the radial land this is how well they are this is the radial land and this is the cutting edge of the file and this is the tip of the file which is slightly uh, you know sharper and compared to it penetrates the canals well and also you can see the radial lands how they are uh, you know neatly starting from the d1 itself so the rake angle when it says rake angle what is rake angle is this the phase of the blade and the angle which is behind the blade when the cutting happens it rotates in a clockwise direction and the cutting happens at this edge and that blade angle is negative and when the negative rake angle is there the file cuts the dentin by scraping it okay so it also is efficient in such a way that it is not too aggressive like the positive rake angle the positive rake angle files cut it very aggressively that's why you need to the canal gets opened up unwantedly but the same file here as a negative rake angle with a radial land which helps it and at the same time this neg ne negative rake uh, rake angle prevents the file from screwing in and there's more of channel when the de the debris is cut there is lot of space for the uh, you know the debris to come out so you don't feel that this file is actually pulling you into the canals unlike most of your files you would be fear of losing control when you are introducing into the canals most of you would have experienced as if there is somebody sitting at the bottom and pulling you down that kind of losing the control when you are using the file does not happen with these jizai files so this was a comparative study which was done uh, i will share the study a little later at the end you can see the maximum uh, time the file before fractures is almost triple compared to the other competitor files that means to say it was run under a top uh, situation in a curved canal so the kind time it it took to break was and it is quite high compared to the other files so coming to the crucial part that why your files break 
one of our challenges is that any file can break but if we can manage a small uh, interference with this uh, you know in the tooth itself which is a classical anatomical feature if you can manage that your files can be used much safer and for more number of cases if you look at this particular corner if you open up your access cavity and see this as i showed you in that one of the first uh, where i was trying to do that glide path there was some amount of dentine which was covering okay that dentine is called as the dentinal triangle so how do i remove that i recommend you to use a piezo reamer burr size 1 alone inserted into the canal like this this piezo reamers have a safe ended tip that means they will not enlarge the orifice you insert them in a micro motor about 15000 rpm in this direction and move the and piece in lateral direction by moving this in lateral direction you will remove the small speck of dentine which is blocking the root canal orifice this is not to enlarge your orifice this is to remove the coronal interferences which is called as the dentinal triangle if you do this your rotary files you will feel that the rotary files are not stressed here and also in the curvature so if you do this simple step you will even find your and files glide into the canal much better and create an excellent glide path before you introduce your rotary files please this is a very cost effective method so that you can save fractures and embarrassments of the rotary files so coming to uh, what kind of a technique is this jizai files right you must have heard about step back crown down technique uh, with with the change in the metallurgy and the design features with the or, uh, with the jizai files i am teaching you something called as a single length technique that means to say the first file which you are going to use is used entirely to the length of the uh, till the working length there is nothing like you use, use this file in a coronal portion use this in the middle and use this so it is written as 1 2 1 3 the first file itself is taken to the whole length to the whole length of the canal the first file itself is taken the second file and the third file all the files before you do anything the glide path has to be established till the size 15 you will have to use them in 500 uh, you know rpm at torque ranging between 1 to 3 but i would recommend you to keep your torque control motors at the value 3 whichever motor you have all instrument requires the same torque you don't have to keep jumping the torque values for all these three files and you also have to use the file in slow in and out motion and don't try to push them hard this is the technique and the if if you want to know what is the technique used it is called as a single length technique it is neither a crown down nor a step back technique so these are the files so you use the first file 2504 uh, to the whole length then you use 2506 you don't use all the three files in all the three different canal types i will just show you the next uh, technique how do you manage this is that if you have a straight or a slightly curved uh, uh, curved canal use 1 2 and 3 but you have a severely curved canal you just use 1 and 2 you don't use the third uh, file at all because that is unwantedly enlarging the canal this is the technique recommended by the manufacturer but i am going to tell you a simple technique what you need to do and follow in your clinics based on the canal type what you have let's say that there is an orifice opener which is sold separately it is not packed in the uh, pack which is a standard uh, uh, what technique pack you need to buy the orifice opener separately the orifice openers are of a 25 tip size and a 14% taper so you can use this in the coronal portion just to 1 to 2 to 3 mm into the canal when it comes to small canals you start directly with your 2504 right 2504 is taken till the working length and then you take your 2506 to working length when it comes to large canals i will not use my 2504 at all or medium canals i'll just directly take my 25 i use the orifice opener and take 2506 directly into the canals there are situations where you'll have to check something called as the tip diameter and use your 3504 as well in order to prepare most of the time you feel that the canals are quite big and the file is not actually touching the apical portion of the root so what you need to do is then you use your 3504 so this is the sequence very simple sequence 
there is no confusion about using them and it is the most easiest technique to follow there is no confusion because use this in the coronal portion use this in the middle portion no such confusion it is introduced to the complete length and then uh, you use the next file at this point any doubts there are a, a few in the chat box i'll wait Sir, I have noticed that excavation of the pulp tissues is easy without using lubricants. Uh, what is your opinion? Sorry, come again. Using the extirpation of the pulp by? Uh, without the lubricant is easy. What is your opinion on that? So pulp extirpation, you should, uh, it, it, is, it is not a separate step. As you know, as soon as you put your file, if the pulp comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't come out, you'll have to use your hypochlorite to use, remove the uh, pulp rather than thinking of using a lubricant. Lubricant will never remove the uh, pulp tissue. It is better that you keep your canals wet and then that is with hypochlorite and neither the lubricant will remove the pulp tissues. Lubricant is to only lubricate the file, uh, but never use the file dry in the canal to remove the pulp, thinking that if you use a dry file, the pulp will come out. The pulp will not come out in one piece. It depends on uh, what is the state of the pulp. If it's a vital pulp, it will come out. If it is um, you know, partially uh, irreversible pulp, it is in such situation, there is a lot of hyperemia. The hypochloride is a better solution to remove and clean the pulp tissue rather than depending on the lubricant. Is the file available in Kerala? That I think uh, Shivam should answer the question. Ah. Uh, Ma'am, it's already available in Kerala market and it's be available with our uh, dealers in Kerala. I'll be sharing their number into the chat box shortly. Okay, sure. Thank you. Usage time of uh, a desired file. Usage time of the file. Usage time of the file. Uh, what do you mean to say? That means to say that doctor is asking... How, how long we can use time. the file in the canal? Maybe that's what they meant. How long you can use? I don't know. Don't want to answer that question because as I mentioned to you, uh, you'll have to look at uh, two things. One is that, uh, uh, as I mentioned to you, the duration is much lesser to prepare and safety. But since these files don't break, don't keep using them for a longer duration of time. I would say roughly... Four to five cases or maximum six cases, provided you followed all the instructions which I've given, remove the interferences and that. Beyond that, these files, any files will not cut because they will lose its cutting efficiency. Yeah. The same cutting efficiency after uh, four to five cases will completely drastically, the file will just go brush inside and come, but it will not would have removed the dentin. You will find challenges in putting the gutter percha. Yeah. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, sir, glide path done 15 number 2 percentage, then with the 25 number uh, 4 percentage. Will it cost less? Come again with that question. I didn't get that question, Ma. Uh, we have uh, done a glide path uh, with 15 numbers 2 percentage. Then we uh, switch on to 25 4 percentage. Will it cost a uh, less? No, 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 no. They won't cause any ledge. That's the minimum requirement for creating a, a glide path for an AND file so that a rotary file can enter. So by using a 2504, there won't be any ledge formation because this particular file is more safe file because it's got a radial land and will never ever create a ledge. Uh, then how to avoid file breakage in the apical third? As I mentioned to you, this file breakage itself is a different topic uh, by itself. But this particular file today, which I'm sharing to you as the added feature in uh, which the file as the safety feature where the breakages are minimized, not uh, completely eliminated, but you will not have this challenge as simple as that is that you keep your canals lubricated, keep your canals wet throughout your preparation, follow a straight line axis, and then you will have lesser chances of breakage. And if the patient's mouth opening is too less, please do not use rotary files. The other greatest problem today, uh, uh, clinicians, when they discuss with me, the first question I ask them is, does the patient have three finger mouth opening? 
If there is no three finger mouth opening, please do not attempt endodontics and please do not blame the files. Are you seeing my screen? I want to play a small video about uh, the technique. Are you seeing it? Yes, yes sir. Sir. Yeah, okay. There you go. So that was the um, a small video about uh, how the file has to be used. You must have seen that the file is taking a little longer time to go uh, and longer pecs. That is the reason why it is safe. And if you have seen that 2504 uh, was taken to the full length first, right? It was taken to the full length and then only uh, the other file. So there was no uh, what you call the crown down technique where the file was used in the coronal portion and then uh, the other file was used in the apical portion, nothing like that. So this file was taken to the whole length. Any questions here in the technique? Doctors? Uh, so please uh, teach about the proper way of using hypochlorite. No questions on the file? <laughs> because I was expecting some questions uh -huh. on the file. There are so many questions. Um, you can uh, choose the right question and then give it to me because I will take that hypochlorite question everybody has. I would want mm -hmm. to take that hypochlorite question later. Will this uh, file show any wear uh, signs before discarding it? No, the file will not show any wear signs. The calcification is at the apex, so how can we leave a calcified canal? 
I didn't understand that question. How can I leave a calcified canal? You can leave a calcified canal, provided I told you that you'll have to base yourself. What is the periapical area? I can't go and go and fight with that calcification, right? So if it's calcified, if it's calcified. So if it's at the apical area, I can't do it. If it's at the coronal area, I can do troughing with the help of microscope and then do something with that. But at the apical area, I can't go and dig into it. That's so, uh, I would, yeah, that's all. Uh, about the so, files, the other questions are about the uh, hypochlorite yeah, access. That I will take at the, at the end of the presentation. So, if nobody's got a doubt, it is one of the most safest files. You can see the cross-section of the money. Sir, one more question. Is this uh, it heat treated? Yeah, it is an heat treated file. It is called as an R phase file. It is a rhomboidal phase, which is between the austenite mother's phase and a daughter's phase. It is in between. And it is at 37 degrees centigrade, where the file is actually present when it was milled. So it is a controlled memory file, wherein you bend it, it will stay like that after Hello. coming from Somebody the Somebody is not edible. Hello, can you hear me now? So we are able to hear. Yes, sir. I said it is uh, audible. So what I was. No, it is not audible. Doctor, I think you have to check. Uh, I am audible to others. Yes, sir. It's audible. Okay. So basically, yeah. it's a neat treated file, and uh, the file is uh, manufactured at the rhomboidal phase, and. It's a control memory. What do I mean by that is that when I actually, you know, it, 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 it gets bent into the canal, it comes back. You don't have to bend it back in your hand. You can do that, but autoclaving brings the file back into its normal position. That means to say it will come back and become straight by itself when it is autoclaved. So it's an heat treated file, but only thing, how it is different from the other treated heat treated file is that on the design per se, where it's got a radial land, if you look at the complaints from the control memory file, most of the control memory files don't cut. When they cut, they will, they will feel that they have done the cutting. The gutta percha will not go. That will not be the scene with this particular Jizai files. You will find that whatever preparation, let's say if it's 2504 you have done, your gutta percha 2504 will directly go into your canal without any loss in the working line. So these are some of the images taken under my microscope to show you the radial land and how the flutes are, the tip and everything. The other thing which I want to show about, this is the orifice opener, which is uh, about 14, uh, what you call 14% taper and 25 tip, which is a very short looking file, should be used on the, in the coronal portion of the file. If you can see the debris collected between the flutes in my file, that shows you how efficiently the cutting has happened and the debris is not pushed beyond into the apical area. All the debris is channelized coronally. That's because of the pitch, what the file has. Pitch is nothing but the number of flutes per increase in the millimeter. And you can see how efficient this file is. This is not pictures from the company. This is my own observation under my own microscope. And that's the efficiency. And this is the radial land, which I was talking about, which is a unique feature of this file. And you can see that the control memory feature, the advantage is that I can pre-bend the file and also introduce into the canal, which is possible by this file, unlike any other files. And these are the flutes and the blades, which we were talking about, which shows the sharpness, which is a negative rake angle. So this is the personal assessment that the files can optimally prepare the canal and well. And this is a, a block which is prepared by me, which you can show that the maintenance of the canal anatomy is absolutely fine. There is no any damage of the canal anatomy at any point of time. So this is a case which is treated by Jazai and uh, this is the obturation and you can see that how well and nicely and controlled uh, the canal preparation is. 
So to uh, quote some studies, which says that the shaping ability, this is from the uh, materials uh, journal, which says that the, regarding the canal straightening, the use of GISAI instrument resulted in significant lower straightening compared to the other files which was used in the study. GISAI instrument also has an excellent shaping ability, which is what I was trying to tell you. What do I mean by that the shaping ability is that it maintains the canal curvature as, as the previously unprepared canal was. Unlike the other files, which can actually da damage the canal anatomy, like more, more, if it's like it gouging your the files, the jumping. Since you're using a single continuous length technique, it just goes use a 0 uh, uh, 0.04 directly to working length, then use a 0 0.6 to working length, and 0 0.35. That is where this enlargement with 35 is very crucial and very important, where the damage does not happen. So the other study which I want to which I shared before is that this is a Japanese article wherein uh, it shows that the fracture, the time it took to fracture was quite high, 7.1 times more than the other uh, files used in the uh, study. This is a journal of uh, Japanese Endodontic Association which compared two uh, R phase files. That means to say that is from Coltine, which is an R phase control memory file and Jizai files. It found that it took that the number of uh, times the file rotated before it break, broke was 53.4 times for Jizai. Unlike the EndoWave, which is a first generation ostentic file, is 16.4. And if you compare it with a similar control memory file from iFlex, it is within 15 times. That means to say it broke much earlier. See the rotations after which this file broke. That is the reason which I mentioned. It is the same. Uh, alloy uh, which is used with the R phase treatment, but the design made the difference. The design is the land which is put into the file and a negative rake angle, which has made this file much superior than the currently available files in the market. And it is economically as economic as possible for our Indian scenario. So if you look at it, you might find this file is not an aggressive file. It will not cut like the other files which are currently available in the market. We don't want a file which aggressively cuts and breaks and damages the canal anatomy. We want a file for us to stay safe at the same time, maintain the canal anatomy. And if at all, if there is a iatrogenic problem, tomorrow you and I only have to treat and no other file company will come and treat these iatrogenical errors which are caused, caused by the uh, nickel geranium rotary files. Any question at this point of time? Um, do we no need question. to do circumferential filing when we use these files? You, you can't do any circumferential filing with this uh, because circumferential filings are uh, not done uh, with the rotary files and I don't recommend. Uh, it was possible to be done with silk files, but the technology is different, the technique is different, the alloy is different. Circumferential filing is not possible with rotary files and especially with a control memory file. What is the cost and how many canals it can be used? I think how many canals it can be used is a clinician's question. The cost will be answered by the, uh, you know, Manoj or uh, Shiva. Manoj, are you there? Yep, uh, ma'am. This Jisai uh, file that uh, the kit, the three files coming is costing uh, 1350 1, per pack. How many times we can use in how many canals? That's what the question is. No, that question, as I told you, doctor, is has to be decided by you people, right? I told you about roughly about five to six cases. Okay. Sir. And as I mentioned to you, this is a question I would request all of you not to ask. The reason is. Uh, it's a, it's a, I don't know what type of canal anatomy you're treating. Uh, uh, as, a, as a clinician, please do not ask these questions to any of the manufacturer because any manufacturer will tell a single use. But, but in our sir, scenarios, but sir, yeah, but, sir you say, but sir, you said that it will not show any marking uh, before fracture, before separation. Then how 
we we know will come to know that uh, uh, sooner it will get fracture no no you should understand it is the inherent uh, property of a nickel titanium instrument not only the money instruments or jizai that they will show signs of any uh, warpage like your stainless steel no nickel titanium instruments will show you signs of distortion okay because it is property by the by default it is a slightly softer material compared to stainless steel yes so what i am recommending is here is that you can use it safely for 4 to 5 cases as i am telling you it will not break the only challenge for all of us today is that the nickel titanium instruments break without a warning that is very right here the file is made safer by the technological changes and the design feature thank you sir such a nice such a nice web webinar you are presenting and uh, sir can can we uh, get the slides of this webinar so that we can this is a recorded presentation doctor i think it will be available to you anytime if you want to listen to it yeah it will be better if it's with my voice rather than just the presentation sir next question is about the intra canal medicaments which is the recommended intra canal medicament uh... so i will take i have just few more slides to finish let me finish and we will have another half an hour of uh, time for question and answer session is that okay with your permission can i go ahead yes sir sure yeah. sure so uh, i was asked by um, you know the the uh, i think the participants that they have challenges in understanding one of the products of money how to use a resin cement which is a looting resin cement uh, which is introduced by them um, uh, recently it's called as money sem and uh, when i say a resin cement you should understand that it has got a property where it can be used as a looting cement for your regular metal crowns zirconia crowns and also your all ceramic um, you know what you call ivoclar emax crowns you can also cement a fiber post like unlike which i've showed you here you can also do use the same cement to also do the core build up so it's got a multi use how to use when it comes when you are using it as a fiber post your canal has to be dry you will have to use a bonding agent inside your canal once it's clean thoroughly then cure your bonding agent put your uh, coat your uh, post with the resin cement and then insert it and light cure it and then further use your same resin cement which just comes out of like you know like a flush as the core build up itself add few more drops and finish the core build up this is the technique which can be used regarding etching it's a quite challenging question whether you need to etch a root canal dentine which is already uh, you know bashed up uh, the uh, money uh, bond which is available is a self etching bonding uh, um, you know uh, agent which can be used which can more than bonding it primes the root canal dentine so that it gives an adhesive layer for the resin cement to bond rather than bonding aggressively to the root canal dentine where you are requiring etching the etching of the root canal itself is a challenge and a debated process by itself so how to use this money sem is that you clean the canals put a bonding agent cure it then try to uh, coat the resin cement onto the post and insert it cure it and then whichever flush comes out of it can be used as a core build up material itself and when it comes to your zirconia crowns and other things you don't have to etch and bond anything you can just directly use this uh, inside the this it's a dual cure cement understand it doesn't cure only by light it also cures chemically so there is some amount of chemical reaction which keeps on continuously happening even after you do the light curing it can be used under your regular crowns there is no uh, contraindications for it to be used under your metal crowns or your metal ceramic crowns or your zirconia crowns even your emax crown which demands a resin bonding can also be bonded using this resin cement so i have another interesting case which i wanted to share which i actually used in one of the patients who just had the complete enamel chip off uh, where i used the uh, newly my, uh, money micro uh, filled composites and this is what i was able to get the patient was very happy more than me because these are pictures taken under the microscope these are not through the phone so you can understand the clarity and the color stability of the material 
I really uh, thank money for this wonderful materials which are provided to us now in our country. So uh, any questions at this point of time on Jizai or other things? And we can take a generalized endodontic question. I am just running through a few of the other interesting cases here. Um, these are my few cases where I say that how the root canal was done and how I was able to you know, further retreat it. So these are cases where we uh, kind of has poor prognosis with uh, two caries on involving on either side. And then I was able to save that tooth because it was an angulation defect. Watched under the microscope, found the third canal. That's a middle mesial and treated and obturated it. So perforations can be treated. So we used a uh, gray MTA over here and managed it. This was a well-treated root canal having a sinus here, then opened up and saw there was a sinus opening growing here. Then we saw there was a perforation. We opened it up, filled that whole canal with an MTA. These are aggressively used in endodontic instruments which create this, unlike which I said, Jizai can prevent all these iatrogenical damages and unwantedly enlarging the canals like these. So these are some of the cases on perforation. This is something which I was able to manage with the help of microscope. And somebody was asking me when there was a calcification, how do I treat? If the calcification is from here, under the microscope, I'm able to trough it and go through that and manage it. So this is the same case where you asked me the question. I said there was a big periapical lesion, but the canal is calcified. I had the choice of doing a surgery. But since I had a microscope, I went around troughing the canal. This is not possible by human naked eyes or with the loop. Going through the canal, finally obturated. So I would like to introduce one initiative as a DHO. What we are doing is, uh, as we as a dentist should make small change, we have introduced one of the products to the dental fraternity uh, called as the oral loving, uh, means earth loving tooth care. Uh, if you know that... Uh, there are close to over 3.5 billion toothbrushes which are made up of plastic discarded which cannot which is causing a huge environmental issue this particular oral care is an 100 percent cornstarch uh, brush with the biodegradable brush bristles so save the planet by a small change even their packings are made by papers there's no plastic used these are their old range of uh, products which is flosses again with paper packing these are unique, um, you know, handled floss wherein you compare with the regular ones. They have a smaller head and this has got a longer head and they are recyclable plastic made. They come in various ranges and types. Um, this is something which I humbly request all of you. And another thing during COVID times is that we need a tongue cleaner which is efficiently going between the taste buds and cleaning and not damaging like the conventional tooth. This is a small initiative by uh, Dental Health Organization, my startup, in bringing some of the uh, quality products which can be introduced uh, to our profession, uh, ourselves, use them for efficient oral care and also to the patients. So that's my contact details and uh, you can reach me at this particular number or mail or at any point of time, I can uh, write back to you if you have any questions. Now I'm ready to take your questions on endodontics generally. Sir, uh, which is the recommended uh, endomotor and apex locator? Very gentle. Uh, the recommended endomotor, if you ask me, is the best one at this point of time is from JMorita. If you have the time and uh, means if you have the money, nothing like it. It is one of the best motors which is uh, there, which has got inbuilt feature with everything. There is a new feature in this motor called as OTR. OTR is optimal torque rotation, wherein the files don't break so easily when you have a, with all our regular endo motors, the rotation motion is continuous. You will see technology. Uh, now there is no much new technology in the file systems if you have seen. There is only technology in the rotation you must have seen reciprocation you must have seen um, you know uh, uh, files which uh, rotate adaptive technology so if you look at an endomotor which has got all the feature in it and the new rotation technology is called the otr so best would be the uh, jmorita's um, you know triauto zx2 which also has got an inbuilt apex locator in it 
Any other question? Sir, I'm having a question. Go ahead, doctor. Uh, sir, actually, um, uh, I want to know about your view on uh, dental endoscope uh, versus uh, apex locator. Dental endoscopes are no more in, um, you know, this This was a concept which was started by one company called as JedMed. Okay. So these endoscopes are very expensive and they are not a, they are, they became a failure. They didn't take off the way the company expected it. And they cannot be compared with Apex locators. Apex locators are something which actually tells you electronically where exactly you to stop. Endoscope is something like your camera, which just goes like your any other scope, which is it used. It goes into the root canal. That's what I was told. It's a fiber. Yeah, it's a fiber which just go into the root canal to visualize what is what. But that will not detect anything. It is just a scope. It will not detect the apex. It will just tell you the apex is could be here, right? Or okay. there is a stop or that's a visual, a visual effect wherein the apex locator is more to do with an electronic concept in uh, taking the values from the tissues where you use your lip clip, it takes the values of your oral mucosa and compares it with the periapical uh, tissues. And once you step back, it gives you an insulator effect where it stops at the apex. And then it tells you that you could be at the apex. Yeah, that's the uh, whole idea. Okay. And uh, another doubt is uh, what is your opinion regarding the apex kit? Means some endodontists are, tell, are uh, uh, discouraging that uh, it goes beyond the Apex, which is against the conventional principles of endodontics. Endodontics, that is see, one. This, one this apexem is something, see, these are all techniques which are just experimental, introduced and become obsolete. Why I'm telling you this is anything requires a, see, you might have an horse, but you need a good jockey to drive it, right? Yeah. So these, this concept was introduced by Israel people where it is used to remove conventionally or conservatively the periapical lesions. If you have a big periapical lesion, these instruments were forced through the periapical uh, means through the root, where the root was actually already eaten up. That means to say there is a resorption where you don't have to kind of cut the root to take it. The root is already resolved and these apexum instruments could go and churn the periapical area. Churn means it will like a mixy, it will do and remove all the debris from there and then you can flush it out through your this. There is no endodontist who will discourage it because no endodontist has either used it or even me myself. This was almost a 15 year old technology which I was in contact with them because any new technology which comes in endodontics I've already bought it and used it. So this apexum was one of the techniques which could be a better technique for a non-surgical endodontic work when you have a big periapical lesion Instead of you going and doing a surgery, you can do this. But this was not uh, what you say promoted well, and then it had its own depth. And how to how to negotiate the root canal in which dental stone is present? And uh, final my final question is uh, uh, robotics and uh, endodontics. These two final questions. Of See, basically, when you have calcifications, it's quite challenging to treat. Where exactly is the calcification? When you ask me dental stone, it is nothing but a pulpal stone, which is present in the pulpal, uh, that means a pulp chamber, which is easily removed using your microscopes. You cannot really make out if you are using a naked eyes, whether it is a stone or it is a dentine, or you might be uh, finding it difficult to think that if I cut that, I might perforate it. So, a magnification essential to decide between the pulpal stones. And regarding coming to robotics, sir, I have a very limited knowledge about it. There is only one Chinese robot which was invented for doing endodontic work, but it is all just a uh, video per se. But I don't think so. If the endodontics uh, is done by robotics, you and I will not be required to uh, work so much. I think we are letting the profession to the uh, robotic world where the Robotic surgeons are, in fact, when the surgery is done by robots, everybody is only fearing that whether their skill sets. Today, if you look at cardiac surgery, there are no cardiac surgery seats in US taken. It's all lying vacant. So what I mean to say is technology is changing leaps and bounds. Tomorrow, let us not allow robotics to take control over dentistry. But there was a robot invented and it was tried and experimentally shown in one of the YouTube channels, which I've seen uh, from China. Hope I have answered your question in the right sense, but I want to practice endodontic myself, letting rather than letting it to robots. 
but I think uh, it's a long way and uh, microscope itself was expensive. Patients don't pay us in our Indian scenario and I still love to use my hands and uh, do that, um, you know, procedure day to day to keep my skills. You know, if I leave this particular skill out of my hands, I think somebody else will take it and I don't really feel comfortable. And being a dentist itself, we are not comfortable because the satisfaction what we get is only when you're a surgeon and you cut something, chop something, blood comes. But with endodontics, we don't get that satisfaction. Relieving pain is still our best of the profession. And I am proud to be a dentist and an endodontist myself. The reason is, this is the only procedure. The endodontics is the only procedure in all of the uh, medical field where you are treating a dead tooth and still keeping it inside the body. A dead tissue is never kept in the human body in any other medical fraternity. So I'm proud to be a specialist in this. And I think all of you should also and communicate this to your patient saying that we are re restoring back the function of the tooth the way it is to be original and nothing like saving a natural tooth. Yeah? Thank you, doctor. Okay, sir. The next question is about the intracanal medicaments. Intracanal medicaments and uh, non vital tooth. Intracanal medicaments is a debatable topic. I don't know whether intracanal medicaments work. Intracanal medicaments were taught to us way back when 1960, when Grossman wrote our textbooks. Those days, instruments were not available the way the current instruments are available. Since the instruments are available, you are able to enlarge the canals and clean them better. I don't rely on intracanal medicaments. If you don't see what you're doing, then relying on intracanal medicaments is making sense. It's like beating around the bush. If I have a dirt in the corner of your house, will you clean it or will you keep putting phenol over it so that the smell doesn't come? So I would like to clean it, right? So if I keep on putting intracanal medicaments and expecting the bacteria to today, the greatest challenge with corona is that we as dentists have prescribed antibiotics left and right and people are losing immunity because of the bacterial count lost or the antibacterial not working. Please, endodontics is such a wonderful subject. It has changed over a period of time. And I am one of the propagators of strong um, use means uh, misuse of antibiotics and intracanal medicaments. Clean the canals. Use hypochlorite. Shape the canals to the correct taper. Visualize them in the, uh, this one. I will show you a video of a Whirlpool Effect. You can also type Dr. Vinod Whirlpool Effect in YouTube. You'll get my link. See that video. The way I've explained this, that it is about cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. You and me as an endodontist or a dentist doing an endodontic procedure is a plumber's job. We have to clean everything inside, whatever you see. And if you don't see, the hypochloride will clean it. So please, I don't believe in intracanal medicaments. And I personally don't use intracanal medicaments. What I do in my endodontic procedure is open the tooth. If I'm doing a two-visit endodontics, Flush nicely hypochlorite for about 15-20 minutes. That means to say keep the canals wet when I'm doing my access cavity. Nicely flush it, clean it. Not even just a dry cotton, not with any medicament, just to close your pulp and use glass enamel as my provisional restoration and not the temporary cement. The reason is I can do a wall buildup also and I can protect the tooth from infecting from the oral uh, bacteria. I don't use temporary filling for my to visit endodontics. So this is how I protect rather than relying on intracanal medicaments. And I'm, I'm, uh, I would request you to follow this and see for yourself how wonderful it is that you don't have to have the headache of cleaning the intracanal medicaments, whatever you use. The classically used intracanal medicaments were weeping canals and other things. Everybody is trying calcium hydroxide, which is in an injectable form. Yes, you can try, but I don't believe in that. I believe in cleaning, cleaning, cleaning with hypochlorite, dry the canal as much as possible, and then call for a second visit and finish it. Yes, doctor, any questions? The next question is about the materials used for the preparing the perforation. The materials used for the perforation is that one of the materials which you should be using, I don't know whether I'll be able to show that slide to you, perforation had a separate topic. Uh, we should see where is the location of the perforation. The location of the perforation is a challenge. If the location of the perforation is not in the bone, you should always use GIC if it's a coronal perforation or something. 
and if it is in the apical or where, wherever there is a you know what you call bone involved then a mta is the solution uh, there are uh, three more questions uh, yes ma'am what is the advantage of warm vertical uh, over the lateral condensation whether the open dressing is uh, effective in severely infected case see i don't believe uh, i will take the second question first because i don't believe in open dressings open dressings will further complicate our root canal treatment wherein your bacteria within the root canal are not dangerous bacteria coming from the mouth which becomes which are aerobes which become obligatory anaerobes and create problems so as much as possible if it's severely uh, infected cases and if there is a swelling do an uh, you know cut in the sulcus and remove the pus and don't expect the pus to come out of the tube okay ensure that what i do simply is that as much as possible when the patient come open the tooth drain the pus as much as possible make the patient sit keep the uh, patient asking the patient to massage this area and remove as much as pus possible 15 20 minutes in the dental chair do a good amount of hypochlorite irrigation close dressing and send inform the patient that he or she has to do at least 10 to 20 times lukewarm water gargling for a sinus opening to open if there is no sinus opening and if there is no sinus opening and the swelling is fluctuant just put a small incision into your sulcus and the pus gets drained out don't expect the pus to come out of the root canal and unexpectedly keeping the dressing tell the patient that the patient will have pain no profession sends the patient immediately the same day when they have severe problems they keep them in the post operative care for 4 5 days and we send the patient out of the dental chairs or the clinic so tell them educate them make them understand this is normal and ask them to report back if they have any emergencies please do not keep closed dressing means open dressings for any of these situations yeah and uh, what was the other question doctor uh that is about the warm vertical condensation over the lateral condensation see uh, the warm vertical condensation always has an advantage because it's going to create a three dimensional seal and provided you do this warm vertical condensation in two techniques that is you have something called as a down pack and a back fill down pack is done uh, when you put your master cone the same master cone what you use for your lateral condensation and then use your plugger to go deep down 5 mm short of your working length and hold it there for 10 seconds so that the heat is generated and passed through the apical area is thoroughly filled so this ensures see our apical uh, seal is more important when we are doing our root canal so that we don't want what is root canal it is about sealing the canal three dimensionally if you do not seal the apical 5 mm and leave lot of cement there there is no use then that could be a leakage and micro leakage and a failure so definitely a warm vertical condensation is advantages over lateral but there are no great studies if you do a lateral condensation well and add lesser amount of sealer and more amount of obturating material then you will definitely be successful in that it is only your clinical judgment but always if you have don't buy technology in bits and pieces if you buy technology today you buy a rotary instrument tomorrow you buy a pex locator tomorrow thermoplastics that's not endodontics if you want to do good and endodontics it has to be your buzz it has to be your files it has to be your apex locator it has to be your endomotor it has to be your this do you buy uh, you know technology in bits and pieces when you buy your implant kit you don't right but why do you compromise when it comes to end uh, endodontics so everything is important every aspect of endodontic access is important biomechanical preparation is important and obturation is important and moreover the access filling is important which has to be done immediately after you obturate and not after few days call the patient because you're not sure whether the patient has will get a pain so might you might have to remove the gutta percha okay sir so the next question is uh, using teflon instead of dry cotton for two visit closure as they say there can be microbial contamination when cotton is used is it so there are too many sores too, too many sores and ifs and buts too many people talking too many things i would simply use cotton and use a glass enamel rather than increasing using a teflon which is more expensive and then trying to do with a temporary filling i have two advantages of using cotton that it is quite dry and if i put a glass enamel it is much better you you can see it yourself start doing it in your clinic tomorrow onwards you put a temporary filling and a cotton you will see the cotton being wet 
that tells you that there has been a micro leakage from your temporary restoration. But if you put a cotton inside and put a glass inomer and come and tell me, uh, maybe whenever we get a chance, the cotton will be dry. So that simply clinically solves your mystery of how important is the uh, coronal seal. So in between restoration, that means if you're doing two visit endodontics, I would go with a cotton and a glass enamel rather than a Teflon or anything else, which is unwantedly expensive. Yeah. The next question is about the proper way of using sodium hypochlorite. First of all, you should use sodium hypochlorite 5.25%, which is not available in the country. We are using 3% because the manufacturers don't manufacture 5.25%. The other challenge is that what is the quantity used? The quantity used is if it's more, more quantity is required for a vital case because you have more dissolution required because there's a lot of volume of pulp tissue. Younger the case, more volume required. In the non-vital case, you require lesser, lesser amount of hypochlorite but how do I use hypochloride is that I, when I, as soon as I open my access cavity, I keep my canals flooded. So when I flood my canal uh, with hypochloride and I uh, keep it wet throughout my instrumentation, I'll be ensuring that my liquid goes into the uh, all areas. So that is one of the ways I actually keep the exposure. So at an average, if you look at your root canal therapy, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes in your initial sitting. And the next is that it might take about, uh, you can look at this video. I can just play it for you, which is, uh, shh, can't play this. Okay. You can look at my video at the YouTube link, which I have given here. So you can just uh, get that uh, YouTube link, which you can just type as, um, you know, Dr. Vinod Whirlpool effect. So I keep my canals wet throughout my endodontic procedure. That means from the access cavity, when I'm shaping, using the files in between, when I'm using a, lubricant along with that it gives me a champagne effect so it's average about half an hour i keep my canals wet with hypochlorite before sending the patient uh, out of my clinic for the first visit when i patient is called for the second visit he comes again we further remove the cotton again flush the canals with hypochlorite and try to use my and instrument into the canal called as manual dynamic agitation which you'll see in the youtube video where i'm pumping the file into the canals to and fro motion so that all the debris is further removed and then dry it and then obturate it. So uh, the average, I use about, um, let's say two ml syringes, about uh, five to six, which is about 10 ml for an uh, vital case and about, uh, uh, about uh, six ml in a non-vital case. That's the volume I use. Sir, uh, I think almost all the questions are over. So that's uh, great. Uh, thank you all. Thank you, Mosmi, for your uh, wonderful coordination. And uh, thank you, Mani and team, for giving me and uh, all the participants an opportunity to interact in this pandemic time and gaining some knowledge. Hope my presentation will help you do good endodontics and serve the community. I also run a microscope dedicated training program uh, on one-to-one -one basis. Uh, those who are interested can get in touch with me on getting training on magnification. I'm running this for the past 11 years now, first in the country. So that's about my course. And uh, finally, I would say you and I are important. All that matters is be the clinicians and all this technology is just lying there until and unless we use them appropriately. Please use uh, technology judiciously for the betterment of the society and for our profession. Thank you, thank you, President of the IDA Malnad branch secretary and the whole team and all the participants for Thank attending you, this. Thank you for hosting us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ravinod, sir, for giving uh, A2C about uh, the antibiotics in two, and our, two hours time. And it's a uh, great privilege and honor on behalf of uh, IDA Malnad. I thank you uh, for sharing your knowledge as well as your valuable time. And you make the work topic and the topics uh, very simple and clear. Now, I thank uh, Dr. Weber Kalarikal, President ITA Malamad, for his constant support and encouragement. And I also thank Dr. Pradeep, Secretary ITA Malamad, for uh, uh, helping me in organizing this webinar. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it uh, today for, uh, due to some uh, personal uh, engagement. 
I thank all the participants, both uh, Malanad members as well as the non-Malanad members, and uh, I'm very happy to inform you all that with all your support, we backed last year's state award for the best CD, and it's with all your support, and we need your uh, further support for the upcoming webinars. I uh, and uh, we actually, on behalf of IBM Malanad, uh, our uh, sincere gratitude to the sponsors of the webinar. Mani Group, uh, they supported us last year and uh, we need more and more support from you. Thank you, Mani Group. And I thank all the senior members of IDA Malignard for the constant encouragement and uh, support. I thank you once again. Hope to see you all for the next webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Thank you. Well, uh, on behalf of Team Mani, I would also like to extend all our gratitude. Uh, Firstly, to our uh, speaker for the day, Dr. Vinod Kumar, for taking his time out and sharing his entire uh, knowledge and experience, a uh, vast experience that he has gained over these years with uh, everyone in present. So thanks a lot for uh, sharing all those uh, valuable insights. Uh, and I would also like to thank Dr. Deepak sir from ID Malanadu team. Uh, Dr. Pradeep sir is not here and uh, Dr. Mashri Ma'am for uh, all your support in helping in conducting this activity. And uh, as stated by Ma'am, yes, we will be more than happy to be a part of it in coming futures also. Hopefully, when things are back to normal, we might be able to come and uh, do an on-site workshop and that will be more uh, you know, uh, beneficial and uh, engaging for all the attendees. And uh, last but no, by no means the least, uh, thanks to all the attendees for uh, taking your time out and attending this session. Thank you for making the session show, so interactive uh, for, with your questions. And uh, uh, we, as is requested, we have uh, will be sharing a link on the group uh, for the feedbacks. We request you all to please uh, share your valuable feedback on that link. So everyone from here, uh, from the team money, I thank you and have a nice and a safe day. Thank you. Thank you so much.